Hi everybody, Mr. Jacobson here. I have a great new idea about learning that I want to share with everybody today. This is my son Ian, and uh, his basketball season's starting up. You're pretty excited about it? Yeah! Alright, we're going to get a jump start here by uh, doing a little bit of free throw practice in the driveway. We marked off the free throw line here. We're going to try something new today. Ian, when you take a shot today, first of all, you're going to be wearing these, alright? Okay. And then, as soon as you let the ball go, I want you to close your eyes and cover them up, and don't open them until I tap you on the shoulder, okay? All right, here, get these on. All right, how's that? Good. Did I make it? I'll tell you what, I'll let you know tomorrow. Just keep shooting, okay? Okay. Now this is my daughter Ivy. She started learning to play guitar a couple weeks ago and she's going to do a little practicing right now. We got the hearing protectors on her so she can't hear what she's playing, but the sound is coming through my headphones and I'm going to take some notes. Go ahead. Did I do it right? I'll tell you what, I'll let you know tomorrow. Just keep playing. Now I hate to keep a good idea to myself, so I went and talked to Coach Martsky and Mr. Stoughton, our band director, because I thought they might want to use this strategy with their own students. As it turned out, they both reacted in roughly the same way to my idea. I don't know, sounds like a terrible idea to me. That's not gonna work. It's ridiculous. Now at first I was disappointed by their reaction, but as I talked with them, I started to understand that when you're trying to develop a skill, it's best to get immediate feedback. That way, if you're doing something wrong, you can take corrective action right away. See, if you do something the wrong way over and over, you just get really good at doing it the wrong way. Now, over here, we've got some sixth graders. Let's see what they're up to. Hey, uh, what are you guys doing over here? Some math homework. homework. Math homework. Hey, that sounds like fun. How's it going, guys? How are you doing on this? Good. 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 Uh, Mr. J, could you check this to make sure I got it right? I'll tell you what, I'll let you know tomorrow if you got it right. For now, I want you to just keep working, okay? Just keep working. Got it. Did you notice anything about that? Let's recap. I'll let you know tomorrow. Just keep shooting, okay? I'll let you know tomorrow. Just keep playing. I'll let you know tomorrow if you got it right. For now, I want you to just keep working, okay? Just keep working. Now, it was probably obvious right away that what I was doing with my kids in basketball and music didn't make any sense at all. But it also doesn't make any sense to do the same thing in math. This is why I've decided to start sending math homework answers home with the students. When they do their work, I want them to check their answers right away. If they made a mistake, I want them to go back through their work and see if they can figure out what they did wrong and how to fix it. I think this is way better than waiting until the next day to find out that they've already started to develop some bad habits that might be hard to break. Now, I think this is a good idea, but I know that some people, especially parents, might have some questions about this. For example... Don't you think they'll just copy the answers? This is a good question, but first of all, I think that most students can be trusted to do the right thing if they know why they're doing it. If students understand that the homework is there to give them practice so they can do their best on the tests and keep moving forward in math, they're not going to want to cheat themselves out of that education. Furthermore, the only way a student can get credit on a homework assignment is if they show me how they got the answers. If all a student does is go through and copy down the answers off the sheet, I'm going to make them redo it anyway. So you're sending the answers home with my kid? Isn't that going to make it too easy when it gets hard? He'll just look at the answer. I definitely understand this concern. Productive struggle is an important part of the learning process, and before students check the answer sheet, I always want them to do their best to answer the question on their own. Having said that, when struggle turns to frustration, our brains tend to shut down. I'd much rather have a student look at the answer sheet and learn something than to just give up. What should we do if we can't get the right answer? There are a couple things students can do if they get stuck. One great idea is to go onto the CPM ebook and use the homework help. They give great hints that help students if they're not sure how to move forward on a problem. But if that doesn't help, I want students to come to me the next day in class then and say, hey, I struggled with one of those problems last night. If one student tells me that they did, they're probably not the only one, and I want to spend a little time on that problem with the whole class. What I want to know, Mr. Jacobson, is how do you get your hair to look so awesome? 
<laughs> well, Mr. Farman, artwork like this doesn't happen by accident, and I do have a couple of beauty secrets that keep me looking so good. Mostly, though, I can just thank good genetics. My brothers and I all have great heads of hair. It's a trait we inherited from our dad. Well, I hope this information was helpful. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.